Creating the UFO enemy is going to be a multi-step process, so let's get started. In the sprites, I have a sprite UFO that utilizes the Canon sprite from our side scroller. It's 32 by 32, origin point is centered, and has precise collision checking. And then I've got the sprite enemy bullet, which is just an 8 by 8 circle with the origin point centered. I've created two objects from these, Object UFO and Object Enemy Bullet. And the Object Enemy Bullet I have set to a depth of negative 5. I want to create one more object, so let's create it and call it OBJ underscore spawner. We are going to have the UFO spawn in at intervals, and those intervals will get shorter and shorter as the level progresses. So let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to add event, create, and I'm going to create a new variable. Set variable, I'm going to call this global.ufo time, and I'm going to set it to 300. This is going to be the equivalent of 300 steps, so it's going to be about 10 seconds. In a real game, you may want to lengthen this, say maybe 900, but since we're testing and we want this to happen frequently, we'll just keep it at 300. And then we're going to come to main 2, set alarm, and we are going to set alarm 0 to global dot UFO time. Click OK, and then we need to add event alarm, alarm 0. So we want to create this UFO randomly, but we need to decide will it spawn on the left or on the right. And we can do this simply by rolling a random number. So we'll come over to control, and in our questions we'll look for this die test chance. And we'll keep this to sides of two, and we want to create the UFO and give it its direction and speed. So we'll come to main one, and create moving. We are going to create an object UFO, give it an X of negative 16, which will put it off the left side of the screen, and we'll set its Y to random, parentheses 400 plus 40. So at a random position between 40 and 440. We'll also give it a speed of 3 and set direction to 0 because that direction is to the right. Check OK. And so it has a 50% chance of putting it off to the left. The other 50% needs to be on the right. So we'll come to control, else, and we will just copy paste and make sure it's in the right order. So this lower one, we're going to give an X position of room underscore width plus 16, and we're going to give it a direction of 180, because that goes to the left. Click OK, and let's close this object and open our room main. Come to our objects, and we need to put in our object spawner. Let's put that in and then close the room. And so we now have a UFO being created, but we have to deal with what happens when it goes off screen, and we need to reset the spawner timer to a lower interval so that the next UFO appears quicker than the previous one. So let's open up our object UFO, and we are going to add other outside room. Now we can't just destroy the object as soon as it goes outside the room, because it's created outside the room. So if we did that, it would just destroy itself the minute it was created. We need to determine where it came from and where the exit is. That's not as difficult as it sounds. We just need to look at which direction it's moving in. And the way we can do that is by comparing its horizontal speed. So we're going to come to control, test variable, and we are going to test for the variable h speed, and we are going to see if it is less than zero. On the x-axis, negatives go to the left, and since horizontal speed correlates to the x-axis, if we are going less than zero, that means we must be going negative and thus to the left. Click OK, and so if we're going to the left, that means we came from the right, so we need to see if we have gone off the left side completely. So now we're going to test another variable, and we're going to check x, 
and we're going to see if x is less than 0. Let's drag in some blocks. And so if both of these conditions are met, we should decrement the UFO time, reset the timer, and then destroy the UFO. So let's set variable. We will set global.ufo time to a value of minus 100, set to relative. But we don't just want it to keep subtracting, because eventually we'll set UFO time into negative numbers, and that's going to give us a problem. We always want some time on the clock. So above this, we're going to drag another test variable. And we're going to test and see global.ufo time and see if it is greater than 100. So we're only going to subtract 100 if we have more than 100 steps left. So now we need to reset the timer, so come to main 2, set alarm. We will have this apply to the object spawner, and we will set alarm 0 to global.ufo time. And then finally we can destroy it, the UFO object. And so now we need to do this in reverse, so let's just select all, copy, and paste. So now we should have two of these blocks. And in the bottom section, I'm going to change this test h speed and see if it is greater than 0, which means it will be going to the right. And if it is, it needs to be tested to see if it's gone off the right side of the screen. So we'll change this to an x of greater than room underscore width. Let's go ahead and see. And if we wait 10 seconds, a UFO should appear. And there it is. And it will go off the left side of the screen. And the next one should come sooner. Has a 50% chance of appearing on either side of the screen appears on the right again. Eventually, it's going to come every three seconds. And there it is coming from the other side. So we know it works. So now, let's turn the UFO into an obstacle so that it actually fires at the player and we can run into it.